Melanin. Melanin is our soul, our expression of culture. Melanin is our matter. Melanin is our sun. Melanin is our protector, our DNA and diverse pigmentation. Melanin is our badge of honour that makes us one. Wagwan, it's your girl Abna back again with another episode. This is the Destination African Family. This is here for you Afro parents. And this is the village that promises to empower and inspire you in your parenting journey to support the next generation in love. Do we have a treat for you guys today? But before we do that, I've got to go out with a disclaimer. Guys, this is simply a direction for you as parents to really look at this as bit by bit, tweaks and bit by bit advice so that you can use this on your parenting journey. We've got to go in with the etymology of the words. Now, guys, I thought it was really important to do this episode because it's almost like an elephant in the room. We don't understand how much colorism truly affects families, communities, societies, and us as a whole. It's literally what comes inside and, and divides us from the inside out. And of course we know, united we stand. Divided we fall. So colorism, what is it all about? Let's delve in, but before we do, we need to find out the etymology of this word. Now this word is so dear to my heart because it's the very core of what makes us who we are. And that word of course is melanin. Now, for those of you who are new here, we always go into the etymology of every word to ensure that we understand the significance of why we do the things that we do. And for those of you who are familiar with the channel, you guys, you're part of the village, you already know. And you know one of my favorite hobbies is to find out the word in the Akan. That's my language. But of course, you guys out there that are Amharic, Yoruba, Igbo, Swahili, I want to see in the comment section what the word is in your language for the word melanin. What is the word melanin in Chi? It's simply edubidie, edubidie. It's in two parts and this word made me realize that our ancestors knew exactly what they were doing. When you dissect the word, the first part of the word edu simply means edro. And edro is something that is either heavy or it's strong or it's medicinal. So edro, and that's the first part of the word. It's just medicinal and it's strong. Okay guys, so the second part of that word in Chi is bidye. And bidye is simply coal. But it's not just the coal or the charcoal that we've come to know. There are two different types of coal. There's the grey matter, which is grey simply because there's air that's gone into it, and nitrogen has gone into that coal, see I'm getting scientific here, and it's given it that grey looking colour. We're talking about the dark coal, the dark matter, which is full of carbon. It's so interesting. And you never guess what melanin is made up of, 64% carbon. So in the tree, we're talking about something that's medicinal and something that is heavy, made up of 64% carbon. Do you know how special and how precious that is to have melanin? That's a whole different episode all together. Number one, teach your child their value. Listen, we cannot value ourselves if we don't love ourselves. If we don't know who we are, then we really are going by somebody else's narrative. It is that simple. Our pigment, our melanin is what gives us and defines us and makes us who we are. It gives us the opportunity to be able to absorb the sun, to protect our skin from aging, to be able to give us our rhythm, our dance, our structure and everything else that we do. We are a unique people and if we are not defining our child's narrative, somebody's going to be defining it for them. Melanin is something beautiful. So before you actually tell your child to embrace what they have, Rather than that, teach your children to just celebrate what they're naturally blessed with. Number two, guys, teach your children their real history. Let me emphasize this. It starts from the home. Teach them about their true history. This is what gives them their true identity. Give them their true identity before sending them off to school. School will not give them their true identity. 
and education will not give them their true identity. Featuring them in films will not give them their true identity. And of course, fitting in with their friends will not give them their true identity. If your children do not know who they are before sending them to school, I am telling you, someone is going to define their narrative. Teach them their history, then they will know where they were going. If I said to you that Sarah Boone was the lady who improved the ironing board, if I said to you that Charles Richard Drew was the one who found a way to separate different blood types, the red blood cells from the plasma, did you know that? Okay, then if not, make sure your children know their history because that way they will understand that greatness comes in all shades of black. Point number three, guys, this one is really, really important. Beware of your mindset. I can't stress this enough. Beware of your mindset. Parents, words are powerful and they become your children's inner voice. If your child hears you say something that is really dear to your heart, that's what's gonna be really dear to their heart. So ensure that the words that you are saying are positive. And by this I mean, when I was growing up, I remember I would hear parents say things like, Oh, mommy no need one fool, oh yeah, cock cock. Doesn't matter if Auntie Cece looked like a goat, as long as she was fair, Auntie Cece was beautiful. Or I would hear things like, Oh, Kwesi bro need your yard, yo. Shari ya waye, we ti miya ye TV. We ti miya ye se, we ti miya ye se. The thing is, they were so inspired. They would see something on TV, some kind of technology, and they would think it was a white person that did it or a European person that did it. What you don't understand is those words that you say because of your mindset really set a premise in your child's mind. Depending on your child's hue, if they're constantly hearing, oh, this auntie, she's so pretty because she's so fair, depending on their hue, they would either feel self-love or self-hate. Either way, it's dividing. So number three, beware of your mindset. Okay, so family and friends, if you have people in your circle, I'm talking family, I'm talking friends that think this way and actually speak this way, please pull them to the side and have a quiet word because you don't want this around your children. If it doesn't stop, then you know what? Love them from a distance. Point number four, guys, teach your children about the origin of colorism. This is so important. You see, unfortunately, there is already a system that's been established to work against the confidence of our children. As parents, we need a head start on this and we need to ensure that our children know exactly who they are. Teach your children about why colorism is untrue, why it's unnecessary and why it doesn't even feature in their narrative. As long as we've got a head start on this, guys, our children will be able to define their own identity by the very sheer beauty of who they are. Before you know it, we'll have a generation full of people with a different mindset that's good to go. Point number five, Afro parents, teach self-love, not self-hate. Listen, sometimes we feel that, or we are under the impression that everything that we teach our children is by what we say and not by what we do. Do you remember the conversation I, I just spoke about? This one is very pretty because she's so light. Okay, I remember growing up as a teen that some of my friends in their teens would actually start to just bleach their skin because conversations would go something like, ah, oh, she's so pretty, in it? Because she's proper light, in it? Yeah, that was the conversation that my friends were having. We have now passed down the narrative. Black is now associated as being ugly. The melanin that we have been blessed with, the melanin that protects our skin, the melanin that stops us from aging, the more you have, the more you're protected. How has this turned into this narrative? We've bought the lie because somebody told us that it was ugly and we believed it. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, we need to change this narrative. And the only way that we can do that is allowing our children to understand that black is black, black comes in all shades, and black is beautiful. Number six, stop. Just stop it, guys. Seriously, Munjai. Stop giving backhanded compliments. I don't know about other groups and races, but our people, sometimes we are so good at giving back handed compliments. Example, girl, you so fine. You so pretty for a dark skin girl. You've heard that one. Or better still, I remember sometimes I would go out with my aunties and they would see somebody and they would say, hey, 
black beauty. You are so beautiful. Make sure you don't go and get any of your bleaching creams to spoil your beautiful skin. Auntie, why couldn't you just say she was beautiful? That was it. You didn't have to just go back and tell her not to bleach because you didn't really think she was beautiful to begin with. But anyway, you get the point. So guys, backhanded compliments. If you're going to appreciate somebody for what they are, they are beautiful. Not because they're black beauty, not because you don't want them to go and bleach their skin, not because there's anything added onto it. They are just beautiful. Stop making the complexion an issue. Beauty is beauty. And of course, beauty is black. <laughs> Oh, my peoples, if you are enjoying this content, make sure that you subscribe and be sure to share with a friend that you know would benefit from the love and support of this village. Okay, number seven, be sure to define your children's narrative. Be sure to define your children's narrative. It was Chinua Achibi who once said, until the lions have their own historians, the glory of the hunt will glorify the hunter. Parents, it is our responsibility to ensure that our children know the qualities, the attributes, and how precious their melanin truly is. Teach them every day to celebrate who they are. Otherwise, the hunter is going to come in with their tools to define their beauty standards and exactly how they should see and view themselves. And there you have it, guys. Those are your seven points. Let's put a stop to the myths that are crippling our communities, our societies, nations, and even individuals from within the community, from within the village. We've got the power, we can put the stop to it. And of course, remember, every day, all day, each day you look in the mirror, you are beautiful because your melanin makes you so. Until the next time, guys, be sure to pick up your resources on your way out. Like, share, subscribe, empower your children. Give it two taps on the shoulder, flick it right back, and stay safe. Edge